Thanks everybody who came out. Um, happy to be here at Herb again for the second year, which is kind of kind of crazy, right? There was no such thing as this event two years ago, and now it's huge and filling up the arena. Um, so my talk today is I'm going to try not to be a downer too much, but the uh, the, the talk is we're going to talk about. If you're thinking about going into uh, 3D printing, and your, your own 3D printing related business as your full-time job. So, you know, thinking about making the jump from a full-time day job to 3D printing related thing as your day job, or substitute in any other hobby, I think it probably stands, you know, for the same thing. Um, you know, my story, so last year, when we were here, I was a uh, full-time uh, co-owner of Printed Solid. So Printed Solid is the company that I founded in 2013. Um, prior to uh, going full-time with Printed Solid, I was a mechanical engineer. I had a good job. Um, I have a wife and two kids you know, that I have to support. And I actually got into 3D printing for the purposes of actually raising a little bit of extra business money. So it was like a side hustle for me, right? Um, you know, I wasn't, I wasn't ever an entrepreneur. My goal was never to be my own, be my own boss, have my own thing. It was sort of just like a little extra fun thing on the side. I found as I got more and more into 3D printing, I became, you know, discovered the 3D printing community and it really became transitioned from a side hustle business thing to a passion and it kind of became something that became a very large part of my life. So, you know, when the business got big enough that I had the choice to, um, you know, continue working at my day job or figure out some way for the business to maybe go on without me, I said, well, no, I'm gonna live this dream, I'm gonna make this jump. But I really didn't do a lot of thinking at the time around, you know, what, what's that gonna mean for my family? Um, which, which sounds crazy, right? Like, sole breadwinner in a family with very little savings and that sort of thing, and two kids says, no, I'm gonna leave my perfectly great day job and gonna pursue this dream of living my hobby as a full-time job, but I, I decided to do that. And, uh, you know, last year, it was actually here at Earth, I kind of came to the conclusion that, you know, I've, I've lived this dream, and I feel like I've done everything that I could do with 3D printing, everything I wanted to do, everything else is gonna just be building the business bigger and bigger. And am I really meeting my, my goals as, as a parent, because, Every, every month that would go by, every year that would go by, I'd say, well, you know, in six months we'll be big enough that I don't really have to worry about working every single minute of every single day. I think, you know, those of you that have been customers of Printed Solid, you'd know that if you send a support ticket or a chat or a Twitter or whatever, I, I don't respond in like a couple hours, I respond immediately. So I was really, it was really an obsession for me. And so I, I did realize that the business was taking over my life. So I was, I think, maybe failing a little bit as a father, but succeeding as a business person. And so fortunately, yeah, I had the opportunity to go to my partner at the time, David, and say, you know, if you want to take this business and run with it, he was willing to. And I think I was pretty fortunate in that. Um, but yeah, that's my story. So I've come up with kind of 10, bullet points of, you know, 10 things that I wish someone had told me when I was thinking about uh, going full-time into doing my hobby as a job. Um, I think I would have ignored them and continued to do what I was going to do anyways, but, you know, maybe something something to think about by someone who's, who's been down the road. I'm sure many of you have done entrepreneur things as well, so I imagine some of this will resonate. But you know, first, some of the practical things. So you know, first off, think about it. Think about things practically, financially speaking. You know, like I said, a wife and, and two kids. My kids are actually in private school because Delaware's education system kind of sucks. Um, so we had a lot of expenses there that we felt like we couldn't go away from. So the amount of money that I felt like 
I needed to earn versus the amount of money I was capable of earning. I don't know if they aligned. I mean, they, they probably did. I, you know, Brendan Solid did pretty well, but I think I would have been more careful. There was definitely a, a jumping off point. I think in retrospect, I would have said, I am making this salary at my day job. I need to be making 120% of that before I jump off to full time uh, hobby, running my hobby business. Because there's going to be other expenses that I don't think about. Um, insurance was a big one. So I actually was able to um, get Medi Medicaid, right? That's the uh, Medi whatever, whatever, whatever the one is that's not the old people one. Um, we were able to get that from my family for the first several months, but then when revenue started showing up, it didn't work anymore. So buying insurance for a family when you're not under a corporate plan is a lot of money, so consider that. Uh, the, the other thing that my family was not able to do, so about uh, 10 years ago when the housing market crashed, my family actually moved from Arizona to Delaware, and we had a house in Arizona, and we said, uh, yeah, we'll we'll hold on to this house and rent it out for a little bit. This housing market crash thing isn't going to be too bad. It turned out it was really bad. So we actually had a very expensive house in Arizona that we were also paying with, paying for, as well as our personal house. If I could talk to myself at the time, I would have said, you're not going to do this business thing until you get rid of that major debt. I don't know that other people have that kind of extraordinarily unusual situation with money, but everyone's got credit cards and things like that. So definitely, before you would leave a secure, well-paying day job going to running a business, pay everything to zero. Carry zero debt going into your running your own business. Um, I think that sounds obvious when you say it out loud, but when you're in the when you're in the thrill of the moment, you know you have that opportunity where you can leave leave your day job and pursue your dream, you're willing to overlook a lot of things. I wouldn't call that a hard line. Jerry zero debt. Um, the next one here is, so beyond carrying zero debt, you want you want to have a cushion. So, you know, I would say three months, six months of your expenses covered, your expenses and the business, what you expect the business's overhead to be. Um, and, and not that you're necessarily going to need that business, that cushion because you're going to have made the decision for the business to be making enough revenue that you you don't need the cushion. But having it there lets you make better decisions. Um, the more pressure, you know, money makes people do stupid things. So the decisions I made when I was running printed solid part time versus the decisions I made running printed solid full time were very different and for very different reasons. Um, so, and I think, and, and we did have that cushion, but I think we felt like, well, that cushion's really for growth. It's not really for actually using. So, you know, I would say have, not only have that cushion, but let yourself use it if you need to. And use that cushion as something to make sure that you don't have pressure on yourself to make bad decisions. This next one is a really big one, so understand yourself. Why are you choosing to pursue your hobby full-time as a business? Uh, you know, I hear from a lot of people, and I'm guessing if we did a poll, a lot of you would raise your hands. I'm not going to make anyone actually do a poll. But if your reason for wanting to start a 3D printing or a hobby-related business is that you want to be around that hobby and doing, all that, doing that hobby all the time, it doesn't work that way. And what happens is you go and you start the business and all of a sudden your job is business owner and your job is, uh, you know, a bookkeeper and your job is HR and you get to look at the 3D printers and you get to talk to other people about what they're printing and maybe sometimes you get to print things, probably more often you get to tell someone else to print the things that you want to print. So really think long and hard about that. If you have a, if you've built up a decent 3D printing or whatever other hobby related business, and you're, you know, what's, what's your truth is that you want to start a business and it just happens to be in that hobby, go for it. But if, you're, if your truth is that you want to be around 3D printing or whatever that hobby is all the time, really think about it, because it's, it's probably not gonna work that way. You might as, you know, I often would tell people, my friends, my family, that I might as well not be running a 3D printing company. I might, I could be, you know, running a hamburger store at this point. It just happens to be that the things that are around me are 3D printing. So you lose, you, you kind of lose the, the closeness to your hobby. You don't get to work on what your business is about 
anymore, which sounds crazy, but it is the way that it is. Uh, so next point, it's kind of the same thing. So, you know, realize that, so you're, you're leaving your day job, and I think that's exciting, right? You're, you're gonna be your own person, your own boss. And, you know, I, I talked a lot when I was leaving my day job with my coworkers, and they're like, oh, you're gonna go, you know, have fun, work on 3D printing stuff all the time, but it, it's not. You're going from one job to another job, and it's, it's, it's still a job. You're not gonna be a person who just plays this stuff all the time. In, in order to sustain yourself, it has to be a job. You know that whole if you what is it like if you if you if you love your job you're never going to work a day in your life that that's so totally not true. It's a, if you love your job you're going to work all the time and it becomes your life and, and that's that's okay if that's what you want it to be but just don't expect it that it's going to be something else. It, it is a job. It's it's okay to love your job but just know that that's what it's going to be. This next one, this is the one that, that was really big for me. So are there other things in your life that you should be spending time with other than your business? When you start your business, you are not going to be spending time with anything else. I, I got to physically spend a lot of time with my family. I could do customer support from my phone, but I was never there. I was never, never mentally there. So, you know, think, my guess would be any business that you're starting up, you're probably gonna be, depending on your personality, you're probably gonna be at least five years in before you can get to the point where you're truly just handing off tasks for other people to own and you're not living the business all the time. So do you have things in your life other than yourself and the business that you can afford to be, a, be mentally away from for five years? Um, if the answer is no, you probably just want to keep treating your hobby as a hobby. Like one of the things that was really strange that I realized was I thought when I, you know, when I left my day job, I was working 40 hours a week at my day job and I was probably spending at least 40 hours a week at Printed Solid. But somehow when I transitioned over to you know, running the business as my, my full-time thing, I was working more hours. So I thought like, hey, I'm gonna now be able to focus on Printed Solid and maybe I'm gonna work 60 hours a week and have free time, but it really doesn't work like that. It's really, you are all consumed and working all the time. Uh, my next point here is, I've heard from, you know, I've talked to a lot of different business owners uh, about the, the, the idea of having a partner versus going it on your own. Um, I started going it on my own and brought David on board as a partner uh, about a year into going it on my own. I, I think a lot about that, whether it was something I should have done. Should I have stayed uh, sole proprietor or should I have brought a partner on? And I think bringing the partner on was really the right thing. I think having a partner is really a good thing, but I think understanding the partner and the way the partnership works is very important. So I think it's, when you consider who you want as a partner, you don't just necessarily want someone that you're a good buddy with. You want someone who has different strengths than you, and, you know, because there's a lot of stuff in a business that has to be done, and you want to find someone that can help you do those things, and is good at doing them and enjoys doing them. Um, the other thing is you want to find someone that you're comfortable arguing with. I, you know, I think, in Printed Solid, David and I disagreed on a lot of things, and I think it was really healthy. It you know, made us consider decisions um, much more in depth than, you know, I would have on my own, I would have my own biases, and I would have gone one way, he would have gone one way on his own, and then together we kind of battle it out. I would say further on that to find someone that you are going to be comfortable fighting, because I think one of our drawbacks was sometimes one of us would just give in when we should have fought. I think you know, having a partner that you're, I guess, not comfortable with, but willing to fight with rather than give in is probably a huge value if you're gonna have a partner. Uh, this was another, another fun one that I learned is uh, when you hire people and they don't work out, you can't just be done with them. There's these like labor law things. So uh, I would advise when you get to the city, get to the stage in your business where you need to hire to be very deliberate about it, deliberate about it, talk to other business owners, understand the consequences of what it means if this 
person doesn't work out, um, how you're going to separate from them if it doesn't work out. Um, what we ended up doing is we ended up hiring, and Delaware law allowed us to do this, we kind of hired people on a trial basis. Um, and so it said, you know, we are hiring you for one month to do this job. And then we would say after the one month, we would make them an offer. That made things a lot better. We went through a couple of employees where we really just needed them to be gone, and it was going to cost us a lot of money to get rid of them. And you know, we did wonder if they could, could have chosen to violate the lawsuit or something like that. So it's something I never would have thought about going to start a business, but it's really a big deal. These next couple points, my wife wrote. Uh, so there are things that I didn't think about then, and probably never got the point on. So I'm going to talk about them. Anyway. Um, you want to make sure to over communicate what you're doing so you know oftentimes I'd be going to an event like this and I would have maybe not told my wife that I was going to do that and so she's taking care of the kids but she actually wants to do things and you know you're acknowledging that that person has a life as well and you know supporting them and communicating with them is kind of important um, and, and you need to spend time with that person. So when you have it, when you work for someone else, you schedule your vacation days. When you work for yourself, um, you know you need to. You need to. I guess you also schedule your vacation days. You need to, you, all of your time is working, so you need to schedule non-working hours, and you need to adhere to those. Um, hard thing to do as a business owner, but it's it's important. Uh, so two more. So no matter. No matter how much you think you have planned ahead and have your plan figured out, it is going to change and you need to be, uh, if, if you're really good at planning, you need to have a plan made up that's going to account for changes. I would say more realistically, you need to just be willing to accept that there will be changes and to just accept them as they come rather than spending a lot of time dwelling on ways that you can fight the change. So change happens. Great, beyond my control, nothing I can do about it, I can choose how I'm gonna respond. And so you have to have that, that kind of a mindset. So my last one, this is a, I think anyone over at the printed solid table would stand up and cheer if they can hear this. Uh, if it is just you, so when I started printed solid, it was just me, it was just me for a long time, consider that at some point it may not be just you. And um, your employees may not like doing things the way that you did them, the way that you did, do them may not be very good ways. So consider that you know doing things like uh, you know writing procedures for yourself, so that when someone comes on board to help you, you can quickly communicate those things rather than just saying, "Oh, I'm, you know this this thing goes over here because you know that's where I remember it going. And it's always there." So you know figure out a way that it's you and you're going to scale up and you know you're going to scale up and you can hand that off to someone else to help you. Otherwise, you're going to get to a point where you're so busy, you need someone desperately, and you don't have time for someone to come on board and learn your crazy system. So, yeah, so that's that's kind of my thoughts. Um, I feel like it was a great experience having the opportunity to run a business, and it's a great experience now sort of being back to doing it as a hobby spending more time with my family. Um, does anybody have any questions? Alright. Oh. So your question, did I go back to doing full-time engineering work? Yeah, that's what I did. So I guess another point is, and I think this is just a human point, like don't burn bridges. Um, my job that I left, they took me back in a second, and you know there was absolutely no problem. They were also very tolerant of the fact that you know I was kind of leaving Dave in a difficult spot, and I needed to kind of continue to help out there and then make the bots for a little bit. So yeah, that's, I went right back to the same job, which is great. Okay, thanks everybody for coming to listen. I'm at the Maker Box table, so anybody interested that has other questions, feel free to stop by.